education, having given it, this incredible woman does. Um, this mentor program has gone from strength to strength, and I just can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs> when you are a shining star, and let me let me just give you a little indication of why I say that. I'm the managing director, well, I was, the managing director of Sotheby's Realty. We have 950 real estate offices around the world with the biggest global real estate company in the world, and so I'm a very busy lady. Um, but the first event that was hosted at the Condé Nast College of Fashion changed me, and I quit my job. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I stand in front of you as an entrepreneur. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> Pretty bad word there. Um, and I set up my own business literally two weeks ago. Um, so my phone keeps ringing and I keep looking at it. It's not a bloke, it's a business. Which is a bit like having a baby, I think. I would, really would like you to join me in welcoming one of the most phenomenal women, and like I say, she changed me and made me do this really silly thing about quitting my job. <laughs> but she is a, a she is a mentor to me, and I'm very proud to call her my friend and my mentor. And I love you very much, and I'm so proud of what you've done here today. And all of us are so pleased to be here today. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I want to thank all the mentors for being here first and all the mentees for taking the time. This was just a really small idea um, that I had not so long ago. And now we're in this amazing building um, that I never thought I would even dream about coming in. And we're all sharing stories and networking and it's just amazing for, you, for me to see so much people come here today. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about me or my background, but I want to share a little bit about my story um, and why mental match was born. Um, walks. Um, well, about this time last year, um, I was pregnant. Um, I have a very beautiful daughter, Chloe. She's now nine months. But about when I, when I was around 18 years old, I got caught up in a lot of trouble and I ended up on the wayside. And that can mean a lot of things for different people. But for me, that meant going to prison. And everybody's like, oh my God, she did. Yes, I have. And when I was there, um, I made some mistakes when I was 18, like we all do. He caught up with me almost 10 years down the line. And um, everybody asked me, when the judge was sentencing you, I was very heavily pregnant, what was going through your mind? And for me, the only thing that I was thinking was, what am I going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? And you might be thinking, why would it happen again? But when I was in that place, I met lawyers, doctors, fashion designers, people like you and me who made mistakes a long time ago. And I didn't want to be that person 20 years down the line. I came to this country when I was three years old. My mum is the most inspirational woman ever. Um, when she gave birth to me in hospital in Congo, she had no money to get me out of hospital. No, she left me in hospital, went out, put a basket on her head, and she sold fruit and veg. And she got some money and she came and took me out of hospital. All of us can use the little strength that we have to empower somebody else. So um, some of you who've been to some events that we've done before, it's been very businessy, and, but the women that I've chosen to come and speak today are going to talk to us about what it's like to be a woman and the power of um, mentoring and why this is really, really important for us. Um, before they start, I want to really just give two minutes to women who have empowered me and mentored me when I was in a dark place. And their names are Cass and Nadine. Um, if you can give them a round of applause because they helped me so much. Um, so yes, my name is Nadine Woodley and over um, there is Cassandra Conte. Oh, let me come near me. <laughs> <laughs> no, whoever. So this is Cassandra Conte and uh, we both work together. Uh, we're both creative life skills facilitators. And we had met Mariam while she was spending a little bit of time on Her Majesty's Pleasure. We was working with her to inspire her to follow her dreams, and that's what we do. We work with young women and young men, um, both sides, whether inside and outside, but just to find themselves as young people and find their voices and where they want to go. Oh my God, it's raining. You know, even the workman didn't whistle. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> so I opened the book, I read who the editor was, and I was like, I can't remember who it was 15 years ago. I call Harvey Nichols and I'm like, um, same name as Emma Winter, but 
Anna Winter told me that you are better than Harrods, so um, she told me to come and show you my sample line. And they were like, oh, okay, she said it. Come on over. <laughs> and I'm like, she was like, drop your bag at the entrance. So I was like, okay, so drop my bag at the entrance. Go back the next day, pick up my bag. They call me back, drop my bag. No, I'm eight and a half pregnant, eight months, eight and a half months pregnant. Drop my bag back off. Finally, they called and they were like, oh, okay, we want to buy. I was like, oh, okay. Go back in, didn't know anything, anything. I didn't know how to write a list. I just started, anyway, finally I did my list. And then I hired my first girl, which I've never hired. I was like this, uh, hold on, accounts, hold on a second. Hello, accounts, yeah, hold on a second. You want to hear, hold on. I was sitting alone in a basement, starting off with nobody. But if you're smart enough, and you're street smart, you can, do, you can do anything. There's nothing that can stop you. And my whole point of this is, you know, I never, I never did this for the money, and I don't ever start a business for money, ever. And still, 20 years later, I'm still doing this business. I now sell 55 countries. Um, there's every celeb in my things, but it's still not easy. It's still a struggle. I still have the same problems from 20 years ago. So the most important thing I can say is have patience. Really have patience and treat everyone equal. There's no one that's better than you. I don't believe in being a boss. I think I let everyone get on with their own job. And I think kindness is like one of the most important things and giving back, like starting a business. Just be nice to everybody. Even if they're not nice, if you're really nice to them and they're, they're gonna feel guilty for not being nice. So <laughs> kill them with kindness. It, it works every time. I was a personal trainer and as I became a personal trainer, I was in London quite a bit. And as I was down here, I discovered pole dancing. Went along to a gym one day, tried it out, absolutely loved it. And I was like, okay, this is something that the world needs to know about. I've never been a stripper. I've never done it in any way apart from for fitness. And when I was doing it, I was there thinking there's something in this It made me feel good. The spinning on the pole made me feel light, it made me feel weightless. Anyway, from that one gym session, I went back to Northampton and decided to start teaching it. I started with one pole and six girls in a gym. People thought I was absolutely fucking crazy. <laughs> the gym made me put curtains up at the window because they thought what we were doing was so wrong. Um, anyhow, from that one pole and six girls, I then opened a studio. From a studio, I then opened a bigger studio. From that studio, I then decided that, you know what, I need to train instructors because there was no one teaching it. So my business grew very, very quickly. I became a very big, pit, big fish in a small pond. Um, people were talking about what I was up to. From that point onwards, I then taught at Italia Conti, pineapple was flying all over the world, teaching at Royal Shakespeare Company, the Royal Opera House. Um, and the one thing that inspired me throughout all of that and kept me going was all the women around me. And what would happen was these women from Northampton would be going to pick their kids up from school, dropping them home, running into the studio, walking with their head down, not knowing what on earth they're about to let themselves in for. And within their first session, they were leaving with their head held high, going home feeling absolutely amazing. And I believe as we grow up, we don't always have a hobby. A lot of us forget about hobbies. We get so caught up in doing things day to day to day, whether that be a job, looking after our partners, cooking dinner, all of that bullshit stuff that we all get caught in, instead of putting ourselves first. So anyway, I was sort of preaching a little bit as I was teaching, being like, you can achieve anything in your life. I was a healer at the same time. And um, all of these women were going home and they were ditching their husbands and they were getting new jobs. <laughs> and uh, it was amazing. And you imagine I was doing that all over the county and beyond. So within that, I'd got married. I had a house in the country with two dogs. And um, all of these women around me every day were inspiring me so much. Like You imagine the people were having the confidence to go and completely change their lives around. So what does that mean? You have to start looking at yourself. <laughs> so I'm sat in my little cottage, looking around, going, OK, so this is all the things in my life that I'm supposed to have, right? I had it. This is supposed to, I'm supposed to be really happy right now. And I wasn't. And the reason I wasn't was because in my heart, I had a dream and I'd never ever followed it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, um, God, it's fucking crazy when you talk about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I made the decision to ditch my husband at that point. I walked away from my house. Um, I walked away from everything, the two dogs. Well, we split them actually. So I had one for a bit. 
Do you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> he had the other one. Um, and I decided that I wanted to be a presenter. So I carried on teaching pole dancing in the evenings, ditched being a personal trainer because I hated it. And then I had all this time. So I started to go out and I started auditioning for different jobs, which was hilarious. So I turned up at these random interviews off this website called Star Now. I ended up in ridiculous situations because there was loads of dodgy people around and that's a whole other story. Anyway, I thought, okay, I can do this the long route. So I can keep going in front of other people who are in charge of my destiny, or I can do it my way. So I started speaking to websites and saying to them, hey guys, look, bear in mind this is like six, seven years ago. Um, have you ever thought about doing video content online? And they're like, well, actually, we mainly just write stuff now. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm thinking it would be a really cool thing if I get a camera, I go to some festivals, I start filming my own content, speaking to artists, doing red carpets, and they were like, okay, go for it. So I did it <laughs> and um, ended up basically creating my own website. From that, I have just risen up through the music industry. Um, I now travel the world. I interview incredible, incredible people. Off the back of that, um, I do radio, which has been awesome. I just got signed to CAA, which I've spoken about before. Um, CAA is a really big booking agency they look after. Um, Beyonce, they look after Justin Bieber. Um, I've just been booked for Glastonbury Wireless Festival. Um, and my life was totally different five years ago. So all I'd say is along the way, it's been everyone around me that's been the people that have inspired me. All of those women in those pole dancing rooms, if I hadn't have looked at them and seen the change they've made in their life, I wouldn't be where I am. Everything comes from within. If anything on the outside, whatever that is that you don't like, what's that telling you about yourself? So anything that you want to achieve, it comes from you. And literally anything it is, the tiniest, tiniest thing, if you're sitting there thinking, I don't want to be in this job anymore, you can change it. If you're thinking that, okay, one day I would like to you know, run to be the next Prime Minister. You can do that, but it all comes from you. Yeah. I knew that I wanted to work in fashion, and once I got into fashion, I was always um, looking for someone to take me under their wing. I was very shy, and teach me the ropes, and help me grow professionally, and learn more. And unlike these ladies, actually I never met anyone like that. What I was actually doing was all the people, all my bad managers in the past, I was um, instinctively treating my team the way I didn't like they, they treated me and they treated us, you know, and I was um, sticking up for them, I was making decisions quickly, you know, I wasn't screaming, I was taking them out, all of the things that, you know, as an employee, you kind of hope you're possible to. So, the moral of my story really is that I think that you know you can find inspiration and empowerment even in the negative, like I have, and uh, and you can turn it around. And um, I recently came across a quote by Gandhi that really stuck with me, and he says, "Be the change you want to see in the world." Mm -hmm. And um, three years ago, I started my company exactly because of that. I got fed up with people asking me and picking my brain about fashion and complaining how dysfunctional it is, etc. So I started the company trying to be the change that I wanted to see in the world. So that's why. And I sort of fumbled my way through uh, selling cosmetics in New York. Actually, it was really good fun. The, the customers were great. Moved to LA with the company, and Marina, she's a model, she, she was ma my manager. Um, decided one day to stage a walkout. She wanted to, us all to leave with her. She was very frustrated with the um, hierarchy of the company, didn't feel like she was being treated well, and we all walked out with her. And she was a friend of my dad, so she went, took us all to my dad's salon, we had a salon in LA, and um, my dad said to me, why did you leave? And I said, well, because Marina said we should all go. We should stage this walkout. And he said, go back and take her job. Which I did. <laughs> and I walked back into Shuamora and I, I went to my manager and I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it, I'll take it on. I was 19. <laughs> and, um, and I took on the US division of that company. They, you know, as it progresses, they took me to Japan. I fell in love with the owner of the company. He really took me under his wing. And I've had nine lives in the beauty industry, so I've been a hairdresser. I pretended to be a makeup artist. Um, I then ended up in London opening Shuamora and Harvey Nichols. Um, I then met my business, my, uh, a former business partner of mine, uh, Ruby Hammer, and she asked me if I would work with her and her husband to bring Aveda Cosmetics to the UK. 
Um, I didn't want to quit my job at Shuramora, so I decided to set up my own company. And I worked on Shuramora and Aveda at the same time. And I was probably 23, earning quite a lot of money as a consultant to cosmetic brands that wanted to come to the UK. I then ended up with a PR company, don't know how that happened, but with a gift of the gab, you know. I'm sure Michelle's somewhere now, she's there. Um, you can actually develop quite a bona fide business, helping people promote their businesses, companies, etc. I love beauty. I mean, my thing is, I'm, I think it's all about passion. I love what I do. I love a lipstick, I love the colour, I love the texture of an eyeshadow. I could talk about it endlessly for days, which is why I never have a man in my life, because they just don't want to listen to me. <laughs> I have two beautiful daughters, by the way, one who hates makeup, the other one loves it. Um, so I guess my, 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 I don't know, my story is a bit different, because I, I keep chopping and changing my job. I now have a shop, I've got a shop in Topshop, concession in Topshop. Uh, I've got a PR company, I've got a consulting business. Um, but it's, it's all based around beauty, because that's what my passion is. And I think you have to run with what you love. It's, it's like Melissa said about the, the you know, swimming costumes, bathing suits. Stick with what you know, stick with what you love, drive that forward. You can do anything with it as long as you stick with what your passion is. And uh, I want to thank you so much, Miriam, for bringing us all together. This is like my favourite thing. Having lots of women together empowering each other is like there's nothing better. Um, so uh, I'm Britta, and as long as I can remember, I felt really passionate um, about um, inequality, uh, and in particular, um, inequality that discriminates against women uh, just because they're women. And it started when I was a young girl. I have a brother who I adore and we're best friends. But, you know, my father would say, oh, Britta, go and help your mum tidy the table. I'm like, uh, what about Alex? And, you know, at the time, I didn't know that you call that feminism. Um, and it actually took a long time because I then moved to um, Venezuela. Right? I was 15 and I moved to Venezuela. And I was already this height. So that was really hard on many levels because I was much taller than anybody else. Um, but also it's a very, um, you know, much more conservative society than Germany where I was uh, coming from. And, and I really struggled. I struggled personally um, because I felt really passionate about um, what was happening to women. And the woman who, for example, helped us in the house had four children from four different fathers. And all I wanted to do was uh, you know, take her arm and say, you know, you don't have to put up with that because you're really amazing and you're looking after these four children and you can do it. And, you know, anyway, so I, I'm definitely somebody who wants to touch people and I wish I could actually just walk through and kind of see you all. Uh, no, because I think that's so important, isn't it? To, and it kind of goes back to what you said about authenticity and, and, and stripping it away and being real. And, you know, when people inter, in, inter kind of introduce me and say, oh, Britta is this and she's that. And I'm like, no, no, actually, I'm just really passionate about women and I'm really passionate about doing what I can to help other women feel strong, um, and, and, and that's what I do. And so, um, and the way I do it, the reason why I can do standing up in front of you without completely shaking is because I take inspiration from other women who do that. And I think inspiration is the most important thing. I, I really, really do, do believe that. I mean, skills are important as well, and money is, but without inspiration, um, it's really hard, it's really lonely. I think it's like the juice that makes the world go round. And, and of course, that's why I feel incredibly privileged, because I work with some of the most socially excluded women in countries like Congo, in countries like Afghanistan, in countries like northern Iraq, with Syrian women refugees and with the Yazidi, who have been through hell and hell and hell and back, and, and who it's, you cannot imagine. You know, how do you survive losing your children? How do you survive multiple rapes? How do you survive being a sex slave for a year and a half, being sold on by ISIS again and again and again, and you're only 16? Um, but you know, the, the reality is, actually, because I don't want you to think, they are not victims. They are not. They are really strong. They're amazing, you know, and they, they, all they need, like all of us, is a helping hand, someone who looks you in the eyes and says, you know, I, I believe in you. I know you can do this. I know this is not easy. It's definitely not easy. I mean, we all know that, right? How can that be easy? And it's not about taking that away, but it's about there's something you can do. You can move on and you can believe in your dreams. You know, you talked about dreams and allowing yourself to dream. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. And I'm just going to end by telling you about one person that's inspired me recently. In fact, I just saw her today. Um, her name is Zazi. Um, she is 25. 
Uh, she is Yazidi. Uh, she left uh, northern Iraq when she was three years old and um, went with her family because they were being persecuted by um, Saddam Hussein, uh, went to the Netherlands. Um, and so she grew up there and she was at university studying fashion and architecture. Uh, super talented. And then um, September, August 2014, Thousands of Yazidi women um, were um, uh, held, um, kept kidnapped by ISIS, and the men were killed. I'm sure you heard about that. And um, and she, that's her community. 19 of her female family members are still missing. And um, and she said, okay, I'm going to do something. And she said to me, she said something really incredible. She said, I stopped thinking about myself, and I just went out there and I did it. And what she did is she set up this amazing foundation. Um, called Free Yazidi Foundation, um, and she came to meet me um, because she said, please, but I can, can, you know, Women for Women International, can you help me? And I had literally just decided, this is it, I have to do something about um, Syrian women refugees and the conflict, and particularly the Yazidi, so it was meant to be. Um, and and, and so, so we've started to support her now. But, you know, she now lives in the refugee camps helping the women. You know, she glitchy, and she said it was the biggest culture shock. Imagine coming from the Netherlands to living now in the refugee camps. But she is making the most incredible difference, and, and she takes women's hands. And you know what she does? She actually gives them art classes, and they sing, and they do music, and they just create this moment where they are normal human beings again. And that's giving them hope and power, and then we also provide them with skills. But anyway, I just think, you know, it's about passion, it's about believing that change is possible and, and always look for the inspiration and then kind of hold it dear and, and keep going. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ladies. That was absolutely amazing and I felt super inspired. Um, I just wanted to just ask everybody to do one thing really quickly because I've kind of walked around the room and I'm feeling the energy in the room and I know it's warm and some people are in heels and everybody's just <laughs> feeling like, oh, some people can't see the front. But remember, it's about energy and connectivity. So I want you to just turn to one person on the right, to the right of you or to the left of you, and I want you to hug them. <laughs> we all need oxytocin. Thank you, darling. We all need oxytocin, which mostly mothers get from their children, right? Because you're in close contact but it's something that we actually all need. And what I felt in the room is that we've got loads of women here, you've got ideas going in your head, some things has, you know, it's hit you, some things made you feel like I wanna cry, but oh my gosh, no, I gotta hold it, I gotta hold it. You know, you, 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 you're feeling inspired, the room feeling warm, so I just wanted that energy to, to move around. We are all feeling the same. It doesn't make a difference what we all look like here or how we're presenting ourselves. Inside, we all know what is going on in the woman. <laughs> yes, because this is where we hold our energy. So I just wanted you all to just break that for a second.